benchmarks associated with each one of the stages. So now we can actually do a measurement and metrics ranking associated with how well these folks are doing and how well are they doing within each one of these elements. We can also identify where there might be potential weaknesses and say, maybe these people need more funding to help with the archiving. or Maybe they need a little bit more funding to help with inventory. Maybe they need to work over here with this other group that has this kind of capability. So those are some of the things that we're looking at. And I got asked to stretch a little bit on this because I started looking at it and uh, I got asked, well, can you determine how their finances are going? Are they planning ahead? Are they maintaining their staff? Do they have quality elements associated with those? And they also wanted to know what kind of other things are they looking at, like services. And so we started sitting down and looking at what other types of benchmarks are possible out of just this simple questionnaire, a two hour interview with the data set managers. And yes, we could go through and do financial planning. We we could look at how they were planning for services and delivering the data as services. We could look at how they were actually hitting maybe the federal CPIC elements as well. So some of those things that we were actually talking about inside of this and some of the stuff we were developing can be done in different types of management adjustments. So remember, I'm going to need some more tissue paper, so I really got into the weeds on this one. But beyond that, and sometimes it's good to see the forest through the trees. Anyway, so sometimes I come up back, back up for air out of the weeds. And all of a sudden, you started realizing that, wow, this could be used as a template for what about roles and responsibilities? Any measurements and metrics against those? Rolling those up. What about going in and actually doing things associated with taking the A16 themes and rolling that up? So now we have a base at the data level. That base then can be rolled up into a theme. So we can say theme agriculture. If you have the different data sets, we roll that up into agriculture. We can tell you how well we're doing with theme agriculture. And then at the top level, we can say, this is how well we're doing with portfolio. So these things can be rolled up in higher level types of enterprise space. We also had the unique opportunity as I was going through this, being a leads-oriented person again, to identify best management practices. And this is probably the most fun that I have doing these interviews. Two hours of interview, 10 interviews. Or reviews, we found that there were some really unique things that people were doing out there in the landscape for metadata, for solutions to issues that they were having, collaboration efforts. And what we did is we started harvesting out of these interviews, and it just came from the interviews with a little bit more support from the data managers as to what kind of life cycle, you know, best management practices do you have. Now, when I say management practices, I know it says best management practices. <laughs> But I have a problem with best, because what's best for you may not be good for me. So it could be a good, better, best type of management practice. So what we did is we started looking at an evaluation and a ranking of robustness associated with these management practices. We created measurement metrics. We created a little spreadsheet. We have the same kind of capabilities here, where we can actually look at the robustness associated with these types of management practices. And then you, in your own organization, can take that and maybe apply other management practices or requirements you have to extend it to your own group. So that way it helps a manager evaluate which maybe out of six different types of metadata tools are out there, which one's going to help them do their jobs better. So that's our hope is that we have this implementation and this sharing element going on. So with that, I just want to point back to remember these are templates and I'm more than happy to spend time with you. I know that Wendy is too because she and I have been thinking about this a lot. So by all means, if you want to talk to me, come and catch up with me. Go ahead, take the back door. Uh, so we're, we only got half of them left, so I'm going to step through this pretty quickly. We're back to the roadmap outline. And just so you know, that, that level of detail is what, if we had time, we could have gotten into with each of the photos. Chapter 5 of the document is the, is the business model, the notion of business model. There's four principal components to it. What's the offering? We've talked about that a little bit already. Um, what's the institution? What's it going to require to uh, manage a platform activity? So the managing partner, the partner network, the business processes, the customers, who's the customer of the platform, and how will the commercial platform um, engage with that customer base? And then the financial approach. The financial approach is, to me, one of the more uh, interesting parts of the document because Really good stretch. It looked at what options might be available beyond what we typically think of within the federal sector of you know, authorization and appropriation. It looked at other innovative ways to potentially fund the activity. 
And then the, the last section, the last chapter of the document for the appendices is the implementation of letters. Where does it very clearly to us, maybe not so much in the 93 words that we talked about at the beginning, but in subsequent conversations with OMB, that they wanted action immediately. And we've gone with this concept of time boxes. So we try to lay out the next steps. And time boxes one and two, so the idea is time box one is through the end of the federal fiscal year out of September. Time box two is through the end of calendar year three, fiscal year 11. For fiscal year 12. This section needs a heck of a lot of work. Uh, we took what came from the total work groups in terms of priorities. We tried to figure out where we thought we had some resources available, but it's nowhere near comprehensive, and I'm not sure it's appropriate for resource right now in its, in its current format. And I think that once we get this document out, that's the next place we're going to turn is in each of these tasks that are identified. Can we really make that happen? All right. That's the roadmap. The red roadmap. The red right here. Um, kind of editorialized. This is a good word. I mean, at the end of the day, the creation of another federal geospatial plan. I mean, we have, we've done this. The plan is what we have. Right now, there's some really good stuff in this document, and I can tell you, just from a NOAA perspective, it does, if this doesn't go anywhere at the federal level, there's some stuff in there that I would definitely take back to NOAA. Some of the concepts that are in there, I can absolutely see it playing out. But the plan itself is not the end. The end is changing the way that we do business. And, and this is my take. Karen hasn't seen this, so I hope that I don't get death stares from the front row. Um, <laughs> I'll say that there's at least five things that, that it's going to take.